You know, <clears throat> it's amazing how much people think that they can demand things from God. And I really, really wonder what it must look like from God's perspective. You know? All right, God, we know you're up there. Come on out with your blessings up. You, you, you'll never get me alive, sinner. Look, we've got you surrounded by scripture. There's no way out. Oh, yeah, well, that's what you think. I wrote the book. The Bible says that man's flesh is like grass and flowers, and it's going to fade away in time. But it says also that the Word of God stands forever. Bum, bum, ba -da. Bum, 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 From the worldly desk of United Press Irrational, I'm Byron Mc... In Washington, D.C., today, the Federal Bread and Wine Administration issued its initial findings after a long-term study of the controversial preservative, the Word of God, widely used in Bibles and related Christian products. Correspondent Jerry Smart was there for an exclusive interview with scientist Dr. Hans Oftebook. Thanks, Byron. This is Jerry Smart in Washington, D.C., speaking with Dr. Hans Oftebook. Brilliant, funny voice scientist, and head of the Sheepskate Laboratory Research Department. Dr. Oftebook, what's the story? Yeah, yeah, well, first of all, thank you, Jerry. It's Jerry. Yeah, that's right, thanks, Jerry. Well, we've been putting lost sheep under daily exposure to the Word of God, you know? Uh, reading them the Gospel of Jan, uh, playing Yimmy Swagger at the records. Right. Well, what happened, Dr. Oftebook? Well, after continued and prolonged exposure to the Word of God, several of the lambs began to develop signs of what we call, uh, how you say, uh, a conviction. Oh, conviction? Yeah, that's it, conviction. In fact, one whole section, they suddenly broke out in song and developed large lumps in their throats. I see. But have you been able to conclusively link the Word of God preservative to immortality? Uh, immortality, yeah, yeah, but so far it appears only to be dangerous in those suffering from a heart condition we call terminal belief. Aha! Uh -huh. Have there been any actual deaths, Dr. Oftebook? Oh, you silly guy, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, uh, several of the old men died, uh, but we got some new ones, just in Christ. <laughs> well, thank you, Dr. Oftebook. <laughs> thank you, Yerry. It's Jerry. I know, what you think I am, some sort of yerk? <laughs> a lot of people are wondering, and well, they might, just when the brain boys in Washington will come up with a wireball viable substitute for the Word of God. Will they one day be able to manufacture Christian products that don't contain the controversial preservative, or at least dilute it and still retain the original flavor? Many substitutes have been off offered, but all in all, they tend to leave a very bitter afterlife. Jerry Smart in Washington, D.C. Byron? Thanks, Yerry. <laughs> <clears throat> As of the first of next month, all products containing the controversial preservative, the Word of God, will be required to carry the following notice. Warning, contains the Word of God. The church in general has determined that this product may cause salvation. Should be used only by those who must restrict their normal intake of sin. Frequent and or prolonged use may result in eternal life. <laughs> Meanwhile, congressional debate rages on as to whether the controversial preservative should be banned altogether. A small mob of angry protesters led by Fireball Madeline Murphy O'Hell gathered outside of the uh, House of Bail in Washington today chanting, Heaven, no, we won't go. And uh, stirring up what appears to be some sort of period of tribulation. Uh, final report at the 11th hour. Stop it. Oops. <laughs> <laughs>